So, I would like to say a few words about the numbers, how, what the figure says about the expectations. And I would like to ask you, what do you think this number stands for? It's a hard question. <laughs> 464, this is the number of pages of user manual of a Volvo premium car. And my question is, who reads user manuals? You, you do, yeah? <laughs> With 500 pages, almost. Yeah, that, that, that's my point. And what we need to do is to have an intuitive system. Because from my point of view, mm, if the end user needs to read the user manual, the system is poorly prepared. That's why we have all these UX guys uh, to, to make it as intuitive as, as possible. But to give you examples, right now, for example, when you are buying a mobile phone, all you get is the box with the phone and the USB cable. There is no user manual, there is no instruction there. There is also, they are selling you without the plugin because they are assuming that you have the old one from the previous phone. Yeah? So, What's the answer for it? Maybe it's uh, a practical tutorials. And I will give you my personal example here. A few months ago, my mother-in-law asked me to help her to buy a bike. Uh, it was a normal bike, not an electric one. And after she did it, uh, of course, I put all the parts together. She trusted me. And she went for a ride. And after the ride, I noticed one thing. She isn't using all the functionalities of the system, of this bike. Yeah? She wasn't using the gear box, gear changes. And I asked her why, why, why you're not doing this. And she told me it's mainly because I will do it only after I read the tutorial. She's almost 70, but okay. Uh, what it means, what came to my mind that, for example, the things we are doing intuitively we don't need the user manual, but the things that may change something in the system, in, in her case, it was the gearbox. Yeah? Maybe we should have some simple tutorials, one page tutorials. But we need to remember, because we as a software provider, we need to provide this documentation of the, or the requirements of disk, RAM, because that's our job. The second number, 94%. This is actually the positive feedback of our new front office. But the question here is, where did the 6% go? Um, and the answer is very simple here. We are attached to something which is no. We don't like to change. We don't like to learn new things, in this case, the new system. And it's understandable for me. But if we don't change our mindset, if you change nothing, nothing will change. So, please think about it. And I want to put a big role of a UX lab here, because when we are delivering the system, uh, what we do, we are speaking with the end customers, not the banks, but with their clients, because who will better recognize the system than the user that uses it on a daily basis? So, what we did was, for example, one hour meeting with these end users, and they give us really, really nice feedback. And I think that's, that's the way it should be done with the end customers, because uh, at the end of the day, they have the most powerful voting tool that the world have ever seen. And the voting tool is their legs, because if they are not happy with you, they will go away to the competition. This number, I mentioned this number today. This is the annual turnover of the whole factoring industry in 2021. And as I mentioned earlier, by the 2030, uh, the assumption that uh, they are estimating that it will be doubled. So, how to achieve it? What we need to do? The scalability. Scalability is nothing more than ability of the system to provide more power when it's needed, when the more and more data is processed through the system. And for example, if the data is also decreasing, the system can be lowered down. So for financial institutions, is the lower costs for, 
for maintaining the system. Constant development. Mm, I'm a big fan of uh, agile methodology. So we are working in two week sprints. That means that every two week, clients receive some new functionalities, some improvement, and I think that's, that's the way it should be done. Transparent implementation. This is something I'm, I'm really a big fan of. Uh, so what we are providing are release plans. We have the release plans for all, whole 2023. That means that our clients know exactly what features they will have in the system in the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, in the 2023. And microservices. Let me switch, switch to the last slide. What is the optimal number of microservices in the factoring system, for example? Do you have some thoughts about it? To be honest, I don't know, but I know where to start. Uh, we need to have the eff efficiency for the future growth, the estimations by the 2030. So our job is to divide the most, the features that needs the most power to, for example, like payments in factoring, like agreements, like debtors. So this is the one candidate of the microservices. Safety. Because financial institutions, in my opinion, they don't know exactly what's going behind the scenes. But technology, as everything, gets old. So we need to be ready for changing the components, the libraries, because the providers, are when they stop to deliver it, we also need to react because the fraudsters never sleep. And we are speaking about the money here. And the new features in the modern world, this, is, this financial market is very competitive. So this agile approach, agile methodology, helps us to deliver functionalities as fast as possible. And of course, we are flexible because if our clients decide to, that they need some functionalities a little bit earlier, we are able to, to do that. And to make a conclusion, these figures are very important for us. We are analyzing them because at the end of the day, it may happen that these numbers are creating trends for you. And maybe it's a different, different way. Maybe the trends are creating these numbers. Please think about it. Thank you very much.